nothing would work anymore. Uh, we would be crippled. The whole society would be completely in chaos. It would take years, if not generations, to recover from something like that. So similarly, when Krishna turned off this divine technology, uh, the whole world was thrown into chaos, and there was a, a long, dark age after that. And we're actually just climbing out of that dark age now, getting back into you know, something resembling situ civilization. Uh, unfortunately, it's demoniac civilization because there's no authentic God consciousness. And God consciousness is actively opposed, and that knowledge has been deliberately suppressed, especially in the West. So, uh, fortunately, <laughs> we're on the verge of the collapse of that materialistic civilization uh, because they have done so many unsustainable things ecologically, economically, socially, politically. Uh, and uh, very soon, I think, we're going to see the general disintegration of this nonsense culture. But these are all consequences of Krishna. Krishna's actions back in the, in the uh, time when he was on this earth set up the Kali Yuga, set up the situation. Uh, for example, there was uh, a statement, where is it? It's in one of the Puranas, I think it's Bhavishya Purana, that the Kshatriyas killed in the battle of Kurukshetra because they were killed in the presence of Krishna, they get liberated in the, into the Brahman, right? The demon Kshatriyas. And then they fall down from the Brahman uh, because they're not really qualified. They're not really liberated, right? So they, they fall down into the material world and they took birth in the family, uh, families of Brahmanas. So the families, the Brahmana families all filled up with these demoniac souls. And that's why the Brahmanas in Kali Yuga became corrupt. See, now we don't have qualified Brahmanas, we have what's called Brahma Bandhus. Brahma Bandhu means a, a friend of a Brahmana. They're, they're born in the Brahmana family, but they don't have the actual qualification. Huh? Remember Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita that... Uh, He's talking about the four varnas. Chatur varnya maya shrishtam guna karma vibhagasaha. I divided these varnas, these occupational classes, by guna, quality, specifically the quality of the modes of nature, and karma, the type of work that they do. So guna karma, this is the actual criterion for determining which varna a person should be in. And in the old days, the brahmanas used to administer all kinds of tests. You know, even today, they do the test with the coins and the book. Huh? See which one the baby wants. So there were many more sophisticated tests in the old days. And uh, by these tests, the brahmanas could easily tell who is suited for different kinds of work. Huh? If they're most intelligent and they can learn just by hearing, then they become brahmanas. Uh, if they're more action-oriented, then they become kshatriyas. If they like money and profit, then they become vaishas. Otherwise, shudra. Uh, so then, then we get the appropriate education, because the brahmanas were also in charge of education. But if the brahmanas become self-serving, and they try to create uh, you know, a little monopoly on knowledge instead of distributing the knowledge freely, then the whole thing becomes corrupt. And of course, the first thing you're going to do is say, well, we're born in Brahmin families, so we're automatically Brahmins. And, yeah, nobody else can be a Brahmin. <laughs> it's so childish, it's really stupid, you know. They're, by, by doing that, they completely sabotage the whole system of Vedic culture. Because Vedic culture depends on qualified Brahmanas. If the Brahmanas are, aren't there, or if they're not qualified, or if the society doesn't support them nicely, then the whole thing is finished. The whole thing bites the dust very quickly. Because then nobody is giving the authentic Vedic knowledge. 
And without the authentic Vedic knowledge, you can't become self-realized. And if you don't become self-realized, then a whole society goes downhill. So actually, Krishna was setting this up. He was preparing the world for the Kali Yuga by eliminating all the kings. If the kings aren't there, there's nobody to enforce the Vedic rules, see? And then the brahmanas can get away with all kinds of nonsense, and they become degraded, and then the whole society crashes. Uh, so actually, Krishna set that situation up perfectly by the whole Pandavas and Kauravas and the battle of Kurukshetra and the whole thing. It was all his arrangement. Uh, he did that deliberately because Kali Yuga means that everything becomes degraded. He even sent Shankaracharya. Uh, that you, he told Lord Shiva, you appear as a Brahmana in the age of Kali and you delude the people in general by teaching a false philosophy. And the, the exact word that he uses is asach chastra. Asat shastra. And when, they, when those words combine, they become asach chastra. It's a tongue twister. But anyway, Shankaracharya came on the order of Lord Vishnu and spread his nonsense philosophy. And now everyone is completely confused about it, especially in India. Uh, there's so much of this uh, Mayavadi impersonal philosophy. Uh, I am you and you are me and we are all together. Right? <laughs> I mean, this is such nonsense. Uh, any intelligent person, any, anyone who simply observes life the way it is, they know this is impossible. That individuality is one of the indelible qualities of consciousness. Uh, even Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, the second chapter, that you and I and all these kings always existed, and never will there be a time when we do not exist as individuals, huh? not as some big lump. I mean, that's such a nonsense idea. It's just so distasteful. But they do it to justify their nonsense activities. See? If ultimately uh, we're all one and, and you're God and I'm God, then we can do whatever we want and nobody can find fault with anybody else. See? It obviates all discussion. Now there's no more need to talk about anything, no more basis for authority or morality, no more. Uh, basis for actual philosophy or spiritual practices because after all we're all one so what does it matter let's just do whatever we want nobody can say anything about anybody else and we can all go to hell in, in one grand parade yeah, wonderful <laughs> this is demon huh? democracy <laughs> as Prabhupada would say so we're not attached to these ideas of Western culture because now we see the result. After so many centuries of this materialistic culture, well, what have we got? You know, everybody's miserable. Everyone's fighting. Everyone's a slave. Hmm? Marriages are falling apart. You know, kids are getting abused, and you know, there's all kinds of. Uh, corruption in the politics and in the financial markets. You know, there, nobody's following any rules. It's just all driven by greed. And the guess what? The motivation, or not the motivation, but the, the justification behind all of it is this Mayavadi philosophy. See? Because then there's no rules, there's no standards, nobody has any authority over, you can do whatever you want, there's no consequences, whatever you can get away with, that's fine, do it. If it makes a profit, then great. You know, if, if we can finish the next quarter with a, with a profit on the books, then you all get big bonuses and then everybody goes away happy, right? Except not. <laughs> Except the, all of this is dependent on cheating business. And when you cheat someone, then they suffer. And ultimately, you suffer because, guess what? The universe does have rules, and it does have justice, and it does have morality. 
And if we don't follow those moral principles, then we all suffer. You see? So if you take away the philosophical justification for the moral rules of society, then of course the whole thing is going to degrade into, into a big mess. You know? I mean, you might say, well, Shankaracharya or Buddha themselves followed all the moral principles and like that, and their character was very nice and elevated, you know? And so they served as a good example, and if people would follow that, then we'd be okay, even with impersonal philosophy. But the problem is that people don't follow it. <laughs> you tell the average, the average man on the street that, hey, there's no morality, there's no authority, there's no God, there's no nothing. And he's going to go, oh, great, I can do whatever I want. You know, it's like direct, direct link, A to B. Oh, there's no God. Great, I can do whatever I want.